did you read the call from algebra? If I give you a graph and ask you if the function is inverse, what kind of test do you do? Given a graph, I want you to look at it and I ask you, is it a, is it, is this graph has an inverse? How do you check that? What test? Vertical light test or horizontal light test? Horizontal light test, right? As, as, as long as it's only intersect the graph at most once, then it has an inverse. If you look at this side graph, how do I know this is a side graph? Because it's, sem it's symmetric about the origin, right? It's odd function. Right? So if you draw a horizontal line test, it's intersect the side fun function infinite many places, oh, finite period here, but if you would have continued to draw it out to negative infinity and positive infinity, that blue line will cross the graph infinitely many times. Now, to find the inverse of a side function, I have to restrict my domain, right? Say, so what if I cut off my graph into a bunch of periods? Say, so I want to, I only want, it's from negative pi, negative pi half to pi half. That's one period. Why do I do that? Because for that chunk of the graph, now I can find its inverse right, with the restricted domain. If I, if I put a horizontal or line through it, it's only cross the, that graph at most one. So I'm good. So if you look look at that graph right there, which the one we just cut off, that's f of x. Equal psi x. The domain is from negative pi half to pi half. Right? What is the range? Start from negative one to one. And you can remember the inverse domain and range, what? Swap, right? They swap. So the inverse f of x equal, let me write inverse in blue. Um, f inverse of x is size inverse of x, or although if you read a textbook, they, they, they can write it as arc. Size of x is the same notation. I prefer the first one because it's shorter. The domain now is from negative one to one, and the range is negative pi half to pi half. That's corresponding, so for the size inverse, for the side inverse, it's correspond to quadrant one and quadrant four. Remember that. Side inverse, the range for side inverse is corresponding to quadrant one and quadrant four. Remember this because it'll help you solve problem later. All right, so let's take a look at 1b. If possible, find the exact value of each expression. For 1b, I'm going to let my expression equal theta, and I'll tell you why I do that. Leave a little space. I'm going to take size both sides. Kind of like you're taking square both sides, or you take side both sides. Um, do you guys remember this? Don't write this down. Long times ago, actually not really, from your recent exams. F of X. If F, if, if, well, if I put 
f inverse inside f, f and f inverse, what are inverse of each other, then what's the result? They what? They cancel each other out, right? Remember the exponential in log, they cancel each other out, right? So just equal x, it's cancel each other out. Vice versa, if I put f inside f inverse, same thing, it's cancel, it's cancel each other out, which is equal to x. Do you remember that? We, did, we talked about this. Same thing here, if <clears throat> sine and sine inverse, of course, before you do anything, you have to check if the, if the input is within your domain. Is square root of three, square root of three over two is belong to negative one and one. Can I cancel? First of all, can I cancel? Yes, I can because I can cancel because you, you gotta check the, the, the domain of, of the original function. The original function is psi inverse of root three over two, right? Because root three over two is belong to that little funny looking E is belong to negative one and one. What do I mean by that? Because I'm starting out, remember your original function is psi inverse whatever you put inside side inverse has to belong to the domain in order to proceed, right? And root three divided by two, root three is roughly one point. Root four is two, root, root, root three is 1.4 or something, 1.6. Something less than two, I know that. Root three is 1.7. Well, 1.7 divided by 2 is going to be less than less than 1, right? So it is belong to this interval. And because of that, I can continue. Psi and psi inverse cancel. That's imply what? That's imply psi theta. I like to write my, that's right there, that's psi theta. I like to write my theta on the left, kind of like x on the left. Equal root three over two. So that's okay. I just cancel psi and psi inverse. Now on your unit circle, what value of psi theta is equal to root three over two? Now, where do I look? Do I look at all four quadrants or just certain quadrants? Certain one, one and four. Remember, you're, you gotta look at your original problem, right? It's inverse, so the, the domain is one and four. So, um, psi theta equal root three over two. So what can you conclude about theta? What angle theta should be? Root three over two. Yeah, this one, right? The only thing I see, that one. Well, quadrant four is negative, so pi over three. C. Psi inverse of two. Yes. Because that's the domain of the psi inverse function right here. Yes. Yes, for all psi inverse functions. <clears throat> psi inverse of two. Can I add, um, well, first of all, I'm gonna let it equal to theta. No, don't write this down yet. Don't write this down. It could be a wrong answer, right? But, but again, you're gonna get your hand dirty in order to get the answer. Can I add psi both side? No, yeah, you can, but then can I do, can I cancel? Can I cancel? Because? Yeah, it's not your main, right? Because. You said because so, so you stop you, you just kind of you can just kind of remove it everything you just undo what you just did right because it was wrong right so because you said okay, since two it is not belong to negative one and one 
<clears throat> That's int y. So what I said there is this value outside the domain. So your answer will be undefined. If I have it here. So let me recap. If x is belong to negative one and one, we're talking about, by the way, um, blue, blue represent the inverse, the black represent the regular function, okay? Um, I'm talking about the side inverse here. I'm not a fan of how they write it. But right here, now we're talking about the inverse function. If x is belong to negative one and one, then you can add psi both sides, right? What you do is you psi and psi inverse cancel, which is equal to x. It's kind of like f and f inverse of x. If psi inverse, start out with psi inverse of x, and x is not belong to the negative one and one, then you say it's undefined. It's just out of the domain. For the regular psi function, You can cancel, uh, again, you add psi inverse both psi, right? You can cancel psi inverse with the psi if x is belong to negative pi half to pi half. If they're not equal to, it's not belong to negative pi half and pi half, it's undefined. Let's take a look at 2a. I'll walk you 2a real quick. Given psi, psi inverse of root three over two, we are allowed to cancel this. Right, so it's equal to what? We did that before, we did this before. Yeah, root three. We, can, we cancel this, right? Because root three over two is belong to negative one and one. So your answer will be root three over two. What about B? Can I cancel side side inverse? Can I cancel psi and psi inverse? Because why why can I why cannot I? Two over root three is roughly two divided by root three. You can check with your calculator, right? You don't you should, you should not guess. One point two. It's one point two. Is one point two belong to two? Is it belong to negative one and one? No, right. 
So you cannot do anything. Just say undefined. Okay. Cannot cancel. Answer is undefined. Oops. Now, let me ask you a question. I know I, th I said this before. How do I know that I'm using the, the interval negative one, one, but not negative high half and high half? You'll be confused on the exam. It's easy to follow me here. Everybody can follow me, like 99% of you. But on the exam, there's a lot of things going, going on, right? And if you're confused. <laughs> how, do, how do I know to choose this interval, but not negative high half, high half? Yeah, because we start out with this, right? Remember what I highlight up there, right? You want to look at the input first. <clears throat> C, where do I look? Do I look at the sine inverse or sine? Sine, right, sine. Can I cancel? So what, what, what interval do I look at right now? Yeah, negative pi over two, pi over two. Negative pi over two, pi over two. Um, is pi third is inside negative pi over two, pi over two? Yes, right. You can you can turn it into decimal. So yes, that means you can cancel. If yes, you can cancel. D, you, you try one A. Any question before I move on? Yes. You, do you go, don't be shy. Worst case scenario, I'll yell at you. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, um, by the way, I've been working on my, people request me to uh, record the lecture the week that I was gone. I finished one. So tonight I'm trying to try to finish the, the second one. Uh, it's one of, I'm already on YouTube, so you can check it out, okay? I want you to do well in the class, don't get me wrong. It just might make my job much easier if you do well in the class. Um, but this is college, right? It's, it's, a lot of it is going to come from personal effort, especially in this class. I did the same when I was in school. Most of it, I studied by myself. Right? Of course, my professor helped me. Right? He, he, well, he teach, right? You know what you're looking for, but you go home and you kind of do yourself a lot. Right? <clears throat> So that's sine. Cosine is pretty much similar-ish. Um, cosine is an even function. It's symmetric about the y-axis. Again, if you put a horizontal line, it cuts the cosine function infinitely everywhere. So that's why we have to restrict the domain. Say if I cut off from zero to pi, just that part. That's that part. And I zoom in, zoom in, in like that. So this one is f of x equal cosine of x. Sometimes I use cosine of x. Sometimes I use cosine of theta. It's the same thing. It's different. It's just a, it's just a, a placeholder. X and theta is a placeholder. <clears throat> the domain of 
cos of x, if you look at the function, is from 0 to pi. The range is from negative 1 to 1. Then it comes to the cos inverse. You swap domain and range just like you did inside. Again, there are two ways of writing this. It's up to you which one you like to use. I prefer the first one. It's just but just personal choice. The domain of the cosine bar is from negative one to one, and the range is from zero to pi. It's similar to, to psi. The only thing different is instead of negative pi half, pi half is zero pi, right? Yes. <clears throat> Let's take a look at 3B. First thing first, I'm going to let it equal to theta. Just I don't know if it's right, right. I just have to try it out. I'm going to add cosine, cosine. Don't write anything down yet. Can I cancel? No, right, because why, why can't why can't I? Yeah, because root two, it is not inside the domain of the inverse. Remember, we start out with inverse, inverse is it's not inside negative one and one. I believe square root two is 1.4 or something like that. Okay. So um so you you raise all you just did. Say undefined. You gotta try cosine inverse of zero and tell me. The answer. Hmm? Oh, I forgot about um the range corresponding to for the cosine inverse is quadrant one and quadrant two. So you look at quadrant one and quadrant two. Uh, what's the answer again? I for, I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Don't be shy. There's no penalty here, right? You get it wrong now, you get it right on the exam. Yeah, five or two, right? So uh, because zero, you say because zero is belong to two, negative one and one. Therefore, you can add cosine both sides. So let's equal theta like that. You add cosine both sides, and then you cancel. So that's imply cosine of theta equals zero. If you look at quadrant one and quadrant two, cosine theta equals zero um, right here. I have, right? I have. So let me recap. For the cosine inverse, as long as x is between negative one and one, you can cancel cosine cosine inverse, which is equal to x. If it's not, then it's undefined. For cosine of x, as long as x is between zero and pi, then you can cancel cosine inverse and cosine. If it's not, why theta is there such that cosine and theta pi is Right now, just say undefined. Okay. 
for B. For B, I start out with cosine inverse, right? So you're gonna look at the domain from negative one to one. Is negative three half is inside negative one to one? No, right? So because negative three half is not belong to negative one and one, your answer is undefined. What about C? Can I cancel? Yeah, right. Um, so you say because, so, so let it, so because two part is inside zero to five. Now here's my trick, uh, especially when I don't have my calculator with me. Pi is the same thing. I can write, no, no, you don't have to write this down. Don't, don't write this. Yeah. I can write pi as three pi over three, right? Zero over three, zero pi over three, one pi over three, two pi over three, three pi over three. I know it's in there. It's just a little trick. In case you don't have a calculator with you. So you cancel, which is equal to two pi three. D is you try one B. Anything else? Anything? Any question before I move on? So we did psi and we did cosine. Now cotan inverse of tangent function. We grabbed tangent function before. It looks like that. Right? It's defined everywhere except for except for odd multiple of pi half. Again, I cannot take everything, right? I have to restrict my domain, pick a piece out of those, any piece you like, but uh, but for without loss of gen generality, right? We we pick the the piece that have a domain from negative pi half to pi half. We pick this piece right here. f of x equal tangent x, where x belongs to negative half to pi half, that's the domain. And range is, if you look at the range, it's negative infinity to positive infinity. Which, if you flip it over, that, will make, that makes it really easy for the, everything. That's implied. F inverse of f, which is tangent inverse of x, or r tangent of x have a domain from negative infinity to positive infinity range is negative pi half to pi half and the range correspond to quadrant one and quadrant four just like sign Plus, find the exact value of each expression. If not, round the answer to two decimal places. Given arctan or tangent inverse of negative one half, I want to know what it is and what it is equal to. If you plug in your calculator, it'll give you some value. Right? But for now, I'm going to let it equal to theta. I'm going to let it equal to theta. Can I add tangent both sides like this? Uh, 
for the tangent inverse, what the, what's the domain? Everything, right? So you don't have to worry much. Right? Everything in, inside of tangent inverse will rotate it. Okay. Cancel, tan and arctan cancel. This imply, um, let, let, let me put one, one little, because, because negative one half belong to negative infinity to infinity. So that imply tangent theta equal negative one half. And you look at quadrant one and quadrant four. Theta equal negative. What angle is theta is, so what angle is tangent theta equal negative one half? I didn't show you this. Um, so tangent equal to let me let me show you what I have on here. I tried to find find it earlier. I couldn't find it. Maybe it's in a different folder. So the one in red, that's your tangent value. Right? Tangent value, how do I get this? You take y divided by x, right? It's pretty easy. Um, do you see one half there? I don't know. I don't see one half. So it's gonna be decimal, right? It's gonna be decimal. So last note. Plug in your calculator. Plug in tangent inverse of one half, the negative one half. Tangent, tangent, both sides, like that. I'm just doing, I just repeating my step here. So theta equal tangent inverse. We just kind of do the same thing. Plug this in your calculator. What did you have? Hmm? Five, negative one five. Uh, two decimal places. So. Uh, Negative point four six. So the first one is your exact answer, and the second one is your approximation. Yeah, that's rating. Yes, yeah, should be in rating. Yes. Thank you for reminding me. So let me recap. For every real number x, tangent, tangent inverse of x equal x. So cancel, that's easy. So tangent inverse take everything. But not the other way around. If you start with tangent x, if you start with a regular function, x must be between negative pi half to pi half in order to cancel. Can I cancel sig b? Yes, right. Tangent inverse take everything. So, so. C is your, you try to. C. Two, two. The other one was 1A and 1B. So, so let me go back for you. 1A was 2D, is a dog. 1B was 4D, is a dog. 
and you try to is 6C. Can I cancel um, 6D? Can I cancel tangent inverse and tangent? Oh, notice that because the asymptote is, is parentheses, not bracket. So negative pi half, yeah, you cannot, right? Again, the way I see this is from negative four pi um, over the negative negative two pi over four and two pi over four. It's the same thing. It's negative pi half, pi half, right? And five pi over four, it is not inside. Right? Or you can use your calculator. 25 for now. Right now, it's something more like your exam here. Um, so those are just little baby steps. Now they mix and match all the functions together. Cosine, tangent, all of it in one. Well, let's keep calm and do it, right? We're gonna do it from inside out. Like always look at the inside function first. Am I allowed to cancel? Am I allowed to continue? Tangent of negative, 33 pi over four. So inside function, let me write out here, tangent of negative 33 pi over four. Let me, let me expand this a little more. Of course, you can use your calculator before. It's the same thing as tangent of ne negative 32 pi over four. Yes, right? Like negative three is the same thing, negative two, negative one. What negative 32 divided by four? negative eight pi, right? Minus pi over four. How many times did you go around the circle with the negative eight pi clockwise? Four times, right? So you basically you go back to the original, isn't it? Right. So I don't care about that part, right? Because I'm going around, around four times and go back to where I begin. All I care about what, what more do I do different, right? So, so I can drop that negative eight pi. What tangent of negative pi over four? Um, I would recommend you look at the unit circle before you use your calculator. Because one, negative pi over four. Um, negative pi over four. You go in this, like this, so. Maybe one, right? It's pi over four then one. Yeah, well, because negative pi over four, you're going pi over So that's equal to negative one. Now, cosine inverse of Tangent negative 33 pi over four, that's, can I replace that with negative one? What's cosine of negative one equal? Oh, that's my theta, right? But what is it equal to? 
do they ask you um they want the exact value so we stop we don't have to do the approximation okay, that's your data if they ask you for approximation you plug in your calculator and then give the approximation I know it looks funny, but it is just a number. It's kind of like log, log three, log five. Right? It looks funny, but it just it's just a constant. C. Tangent of pi over four is one. So that's imply cosine inverse of one. We done. That's theta, right? Because this is equal to theta right you can you just say done you don't have to do anything just say done is the expression can i evaluate cosine of two pi over three a two pi over three inside the domain of cosine remember what the domain of cosine again from zero to pi Yes, right. Yeah. Think of it like three pi over three, right? So two pi over three is inside. Um, what is cosine of two pi over three? If you look in your unit circle, two pi over three right here. Negative one half, thank you. Uh, inverse of negative one half. I, I would recommend look at unit circle first because if your calculator, I don't know about your calculator, but mine doesn't give me, say, if something like root three over two will give me decimals, right? I don't know what it is. Um, what's the inverse of negative one half? If you confuse, you can let it equal to theta. If you don't know how to do that, you can let it equal to theta and then add side, both, both sides, right? You don't have to, but there's more than one way to do this. Side theta of negative one half. You look at quadrant one and quadrant four, right? Because you start out with side inverse. Where side theta equal negative one half. Negative one half. Right here, right? Yes. But remember, you, you only want quadrant one and quadrant four. You cannot take 11 pi over six. 11 pi over six means you, you go through second one and third one, right? Um, so you go what clockwise. So there is what, who is it symmetric to what? Pi over six, right? So negative pi over six. If you plug in your calculator, I want you to do this right now. In your calculator in radian mode, put psi inverse of one half. Psi inverse of, I'm sorry, negative one half. 
So sine inverse of negative 0.5. What do you have? Yeah. Or if you if you wanna you wanna do degree, you can too. It give you negative 30 degrees, isn't it? That's negative pi over six. Yeah. Eight B. Can I evaluate side inverse of three half? Always start from inside out. You always ask yourself a question, can I evaluate it? What is the domain of psi inverse? Yes, negative, thank you. Negative one to also because three half, is three half belong to negative one, two, one? No, it's right. Nope. But you stop. So and define. Um, eight C. Can someone tell me what angle is corresponding to side inverse of negative two over two? Looking at your unit circle though. Side inverse is quadrant one and quadrant four. Negative root two over two. Negative pi over four. Negative pi over four. I know it is. It's seven pi over four is right there, so we can take it. But you, you want just quadrant four, right? We have to go counterclockwise. Uh, clockwise. <clears throat> Say it again. Because the root two over two is negative, so it's going to go counterclockwise. Uh, no, 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 it's not that. Uh, it's because, oh, where am I? It's because we're talking about side inverse and side inverse take quadrant one and quadrant four only. So you only allowed to look at quadrant one and quadrant four. So then why can we do five and six? Uh, we, we <coughs> negative root two over two is Perfect. right there because in order seven pi over four is you going through quadrant second and quadrant third to get there. Yes, so so you go, yeah, that one is you go like this. Okay. Yes. So in order to get that, um, to, to, to stay within quadrant four, you have to go what? Which is negative angle, right? Mm -hmm. I only look up, so what is it? It's, it's symmetric with pi over four, so it's gotta be negative pi over four. <clears throat> What's cosine negative pi over four? Let's talk about, um, um, they didn't restrict the domain. Um, cosine is infinitely many. Um, let's restrict from zero to two pi, okay? What's cosine negative pi over four? Yeah, root two over two. Go down again. <clears throat> Sorry about that.
8D, yeah, you try three. Is there any question? Is it good, good, good time to ask me a question before I move on? Uh, can, can you repeat? I think the mask is kind of difficult to hear. Um, yeah, if you can look it up on unit circle, then yes. Sometimes you won't be able to though. Three pi over four. I'm not sure. <laughs> is is your how about this? Your problem should be consistent with your question, right? With the answer. Um, if I ask you for side inverse, I'm not gonna make you go. If if I ask about side inverse, I'm not gonna let you pick part of two and part of three, right? So it won't be three pi over four. Does it make sense? Now, a lot of time you won't be able to look up on your unit circle. That's real reality. Of course, in the class, we teach about unit circle, but a lot of time you won't be able to. What do we do about that? If the circle doesn't have a radius of one, then it have a different radius, right? Two, three, four. Um, as long as you can put your right triangle in the right quadrant. This should be fine. Right? So let me show you how to do that. Say so number 10 is the same thing as here. You can read this at home, but let me go to number 10. Same logic. I want to find, let's do this one first. No, maybe I'll let you want you do the second one and I'll walk around and see how you do it. But let's do that one first. Tangent of cosine inverse of negative three over eight. You cannot find negative three over eight on unit circle. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw out my four quadrant. I'm gonna pick what quadrant should my right triangle be. Cosine inverse is what quadrant? One and two. Right, cosine inverse is one and two, remember? Um, one and two. So either this one or this one. Which one is it? Which one should I draw my right triangle? Look at look at the input. It's negative, right? So it's gonna be on the negative size of the x-axis. So I know that I'm gonna put my right triangle here. This right here, that's my data. I'm gonna let cosine inverse of negative three over eight equal to theta. Let that little bit equal to theta. It's negative three over eight between negative one and one. Yeah. Yes, right, so I can do what? I can add cosine both sides. Negative three over eight equal cosine of theta. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. X over R, right? Let's plus my R. <clears throat> cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent is going to be negative three. Hypotenuse is eight. Make that negative three because the negative x here. Okay. So you're on the right track. You know you're on the right track. Everything kind of match up. Can you calculate y using, using 
using what? Yes, right. I can find y using a diagram theorem, right? So uh, I know that the two, the square of the sum of the two, some square of the two legs equal to the square of the hypotenuse. So y square plus negative three square equal eight square. Negative three parentheses squared nine equals um, 64. Y squared equals 64 minus nine is 55. X squared both side plus minus square root of 55. Do I choose positive root 55 or negative root 55? because it's quadrant two, right? Sign is positive. Everybody understand this so far? I let my inside function equal to theta. So write out, let cosine inverse of negative three over eight equal theta. Because negative three over eight is between negative one and one, I can add cosine both sides. Cosine, cosine inverse cancel. So that cosine theta equal negative three over eight. You cannot find this on unit circle. Then you have to draw it out. Pick the right quadrant. If it cosine inverse, quadrant one and quadrant two. If it side inverse, quadrant one and quadrant four. If it tangent inverse, quadrant one and quadrant four. Right? So depend on what value you have inside the parentheses. you know where you put your right triangle. And then to find the remaining side, you all you do is just use the Pythagorean theorem. Now, all I have to do is find a tangent of theta. That's my answer because I let that little little it a bit equal to theta, right? So all I have to do is now I have to find the tangent of theta by looking at the problem. Tangent is what over what? Yeah, opposite over adjacent. Opposite is root 55 over 8. And we're done. Uh, say it again. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry about that. Thank you. Over negative three. Thank you very much. You can check your answer. Can you do, I want you to try cotangent, uh, the second one. That one. And now here, I'll put it right here. So the step very much similar. You let the inside.
Hmm? Oh, um, we're going to do this one. There's two of them. I did the first one. Mm -hmm. By the way, um, if you plug in your calculator, you plug in that, and then you check your answer, they have the same approximation. So you know that you're doing right. <clears throat> Just fast forward that part, right? Um, well, I can do over here. Cotangent of cosine inverse of negative three over eight. Cotangent theta is adjacent over op opposite, so negative three over root 55. We done. 